Hello, welcome to this project on more customer segmentation using clustering algorithms. In this project, I'm going to segment or group the customers into several clusters or group using clustering algorithms. Actually, I'm not going to make use of all the clustering techniques in the world, but I'm going to make use of K-means clustering and Debiscan clustering. These are the 10 steps I'm going to follow. I'm making use of the Google Colab environment. So I use this code to mount my drive on this Google Colab notebook. Then I imported all my Python libraries. Actually, this project is a project I've already implemented. So I'm not going to be writing the code in this video but i will try as much as possible to explain every line of code the source of the data set is cargo.com is actually the uh, mall customer segmentation data set so i load the data using pd.csv then i copy the path of the data set and pasted it here and then save it as df then I check the first five rows using dot .ed. But when I did this, the gender column was not properly spelt, you know, and the annual income and the spending score. I did not like these brackets that they have, so I decided to pre-process um, the three columns. So I used dot .rename, and then I specify columns, and then I pass in the, this dictionary. Gender I I corrected it to gender, then spending score, I corrected it to this, annual income, I, I made it to be this, and then I use in place equals to true, so that it will affect the data frame itself. So I decided to confirm using df.add, and the gender, you know, was corrected, the annual income and spending score, uh, uh, you know, we are also corrected, and are now in the format that I wanted. After that, I check for missing values. So I use df.isnore.sum. Now this data is a, you know, is a beautiful data. So it, it doesn't contain any null values. Then I drop unnecessary column. This customer ID is actually unnecessary. So I decided to drop it. I use the drop. I specify the column name and then I specified axis equals to one. Then we enter into the exploratory data analysis phase. Here I ask series of questions and then I move our head into answering them. The first question I asked is, or the first question I asked was, how many customers the model has based on a data set? Here I just used learn to actually calculate the total customers. So we got about 200 customers. Then the second question, do we have more female customers? So I use df.gender to select the gender column and then I use value count to count each of the categories. So females are 112, males 88. So I decided to visualize it using count plot. This sns.set this is just to get this background and then I use count, count plot. I specify the the column and then as we define the data I use plt.show so uh, so we'll be able to visualize it so based on the value count and the visualization it shows that females are more than males then i asked another question how does gender influence spending so i use dot pivot table you know if you're familiar with excel you must have made use of pivot table so as we define the data frame I use gender as the index and then spending score as the values. So after this, females spend more than males. And yeah, females spend more than male. And this is not surprising because females are actually more than males. But I decided to make it more interesting by bringing in hypothesis testing. To actually know, like, is there, is there any significant difference between the female spending, spending score and that of the male? 
So I define the null hypothesis and I define the alternative hypothesis. Then I set the p value threshold to be 0 0.05. Is actually the, um, it is commonly used. You know, 0 0.05 is commonly used. So I made use of the two sample t tests. I actually got the column. Uh, um, I got the spending score for the gender, for the male. I got the spending score for the females. Then I made use of two sample t tests. I printed out the p value. Why I divided the p value by two is because I wanted a one a one tail test. So I got p value of 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 is far far higher than 0 0.05. So I accepted the null hypothesis and concluded that the spending score of females is not actually different from that of males. The difference is just by chance. Then. I asked another question, what is the age distribution of customers? First, I calculated the average age and, is, and it was approximately 39. Uh, as well, I, I calculated the median age and it was about 36. Then I decided to plot an histogram to actually visualize the distribution. So this is it and the peak is actually within 30, no, 30, so it still corresponds with the mean and the median. How, so I asked another question, how does age relate to the spending score of customers? I decided to make use of the scatter plot. This plt.figure fixed size equal to 10 is simply to set the size of this figure. And then sns.scatter plot is to, is to plot a scatter plot. I specify x axis to be age, y axis to be the spending score. Then s is actually the size of this these um these dots the scatter plot itself so based on the scatter plot younger people tend to spend more then i i asked another question what is distribution of annual income and how does it relate with spending score so i plotted the distribution of annual income with this and i plotted the distribution of and i plotted the relationship between annual income and spending score here so the result is that the annual income is actually skewed so we have more people earn between 20 to 80 per annum then when i plotted the annual income against the spending score four groups tends to appear though i have not applied any clustering algorithm yet so you have this group that are that don't really earn much but they spend a lot and then you have this group that earn a lot and they also spend a lot you have this group that are more of they don't really they don't really earn that much and they don't also spend that much and you have this group that they earn much but they don't spend or they spend very little so what is the distribution of spending score i just use histogram I specify the, the column and then I just specify the color. Plotting it, the spending score is actually normally distributed. Yeah. So feature selection, this data set is actually too small and the features are just very few. So I decided to use all the features. Feature transformation is just to get the feature selection and features transformation is simply to get the data set ready for the clustering algorithms. So I have only one column that is categorical in nature, which is the gender column. So I decided to use pd.getDummies. I specify the data frame and I drop the first column to avoid redundancy of the columns because the two columns were given similar information. After that, I use df.add to actually confirm it. Then it's time for what you have been waiting for the k means clustering. So I initialize the cluster or the clustering algorithm. I specify a number of cluster to be five and then I specify random states. But how did I actually get this five? I made use of the elbow method. The elbow method is kind of very simple. I just use a simple for loop, loop through one to 40 clusters and then I saved the sum of, square, sum of square distance and then I made the plot 
using this code here, I just made the plot and then we got this nice curve. The elbow method simply states that at this point, any cluster that, co that corresponds to this point, you know, is the optimal cluster or the optimal clusters. So I pick five, which corresponds to that point. So that is how I got this five. After I've gotten the, after I've done that, I decided to get, I fit into the data, then get the levels. After getting the labels, I decided to visualize it as it relates with our variables. Here, I just made plots of age versus spending score, annual income versus spending score, and gender versus spending score. But I decided to use the U to be the label so that we can actually visualize the different groups or the different levels or the different segments. Now, that's where segmentation comes in. So after visualizing or visualizing age against spending score, we see this group, the orange and the green group. They tend to spend more and are majorly young people. These people, their, their age is not really like, they are spread across the, um, they are spread across, they don't actually have specific range, even these other groups of people. So this group of people tend to be more interesting because they are younger people and they spend a lot more. So let's see how annual income actually relates to the spending score. So we also we still find this group of people here. You know they spend more and they are and irrespective of their annual income, or they spend more irrespective of their annual income. These people they they don't really spend much and they don't also earn much. Then we also have this group, we also have this group, but the most interesting group here are these people because they are the most important to the, co um, to the company. When I plotted gender, gender does not really have much influence in the spending of customers or the spending behavior of customers. I've already tried with this group. They tend to be like this group here, this orange group tends to be more in the female population, but you know, I actually performed hypothesis testing before now, which showed that there's no significant difference between them. So I'm going to leave that. So I decided to do the same thing with Debiscan clustering. Debiscan clustering is a bit different from k clustering because you, know, you have to specify the epsilon and the minimum sample. But how did I get epsilon of, epsilon of 12 and mean samples of 7.5? I try made use of a simple for loop. You know, I played, I played around with different values of epsilon. Then I used for loop for the mean samples, and I plotted this, you know, this beautiful plot here. You know, at this point, I got the the, the maximum C O eight score, and and it corresponds to seven point five. So that is why I made use of this seven point five here. So I just fit into the data, then got the labels from here using dot labels. Here I just printed out the the number of clusters. Actually, there's another one which uh, which is not included as a cluster. It is the label. Sorry, it is the outliers. The way we plot, you are going to see it. So I decided to do the same thing I did with came in clustering plots all our variables and then try to make use of the labels to actually visualize the clusters so this is what we got so we still got about one two three four five five different groups just as they came in clustering but the only thing is that this minus one is the outliers so it still um, give us same you know same conclusion as the came in clustering that age is the dominant factor in determining you know the spending score of customers so irrespective of their annual income young people tend to spend a lot more so i decided to evaluate the model performance um, the model performance so based on my visual inspect my visual inspection is very clear that came in clustering tends to perform better than um, debiscan clustering but still i wanted to Confirm it using CUH coefficient. 
So no, there is not there is nothing much I did there. I just use metrics.co8 score I specify a data frame and then the labels and then I printed out the coefficients. So I got 0 0.45 coefficient for the k means. Then I got 0 0.20 for the db scan. So from here it's, it's clear that k means actually perform better than db scan clustering. So finally, what is the impact of clustering analysis on the on the mall business decision making? Though this was just a toy data from Cargo, but I just decided to make it like it's real life. So from the analysis, we can see clearly that younger people aged between 20 to 40 tend to patronize the products more than older people. So the company or the mall should target its art on this young population as they will get higher turnover and conversion rates you know and when we analyze the data we saw that the more tend to have more female customers than male customers but when i perform hypothesis testing it showed that the spending of um, females and males are not really significant like there's no significant difference between the spending score of both genders but yet it presents an interesting area where you know the mall can gather more data to actually have you know a deeper understanding of you know if females are actually patronizing the mall more so that's it for it thank you for watching the video like the video subscribe turn on the, the notification bell so that whenever i release another video you know you'll be the first to get it so leave your comment also in the comment section regarding the video and how i presented this channel is a young channel so your opinion really really matter